Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gisette and I am a nursing major. I make nursing videos for everybody. Um, it's been a while since I've been on just because, you know, we all switched to online and with coronavirus and then I had summer classes online. It was just a big transition for me and I, and I needed time to figure out that transition by myself. But today I am here with a new video on how to make good grades in pathopharmacology or pharmacology and pathophysiology i am wearing a shirt for anybody like I gave this video a like subscribe i will be coming out with some new videos um you guys can leave comments down below what you like to see and yeah we can go ahead and get right into the video so as you can see i've got a lot of tips on how to make good grades in um, pathopharmacology and I will keep referring to it as pathopharmacology because in my program you take uh, pathology, pathophysiology and pharmacology together at the same time um, but it is a lot of material so they do split it up into two semesters how it would usually be one semester patho and one semester farm we, mother, we marry them together and we split them into two um, it's just easier that way you learn the disease and you learn the drug that treats it and it's like a handshake so the first tip I would suggest is actually getting the getting the pharmacology book but skipping the patho book and I say this because personally I was never tested out of this this was good to like know this really you could get the same information from nurse RN um, on YouTube she I loved watching her it was great uh, but pharmacology is the book I would recommend getting I think we all kind of use this book um, you can see I've tabbed it up if we go inside the book and I write in it and it's just really helpful. I learned throughout this is I learned I couldn't just be one type of learner. I had to be a learner, but I learned I had to be kinesthetic, auditory, and uh, visual. So I feel like because of that, I have some a wide plethora of tips. Starting with, if you're a handwriter like me, handwrite your notes before class. Look a little something like this, all handwritten. So look something like this all handwritten and then um, when you get to class the professor will always add on some story some tidbit on to the side so in a different color write the additional like tidbits that they add on to the slide um, also always record your lectures just because your professor may say something in a lecture that may lead you to believe one thing and then when you get to the test they kind of switch up so it's always good to have you know in um, recording form what they said what they taught also it's good because on your drive home from school you can just play the recording if you've got a long drive i usually always had a 25 plus minute drive home or the morning um or the next morning you could just drive to school and listen to it at the same time and it's a good reinforcement and so that brings us to writing the notes before class adding in notes during class and then after class to call pretty notes so we've got my my pathoform 2 folder you make pretty notes concept maps these were always super fun and also it would force me to go back into the book and read around the side highlight the side make these is I would listen to the recording at the same time as I was about to write these and then I would go into the textbook and highlight what was in the slide and then also read around what was in the slide and add in any extra information that I thought was helpful. They're also much more aesthetically pleasing to look at. You more likely to study them and I feel like I I know on like TikTok they like to make fun of the nursing majors that like like to make their notes pretty. They say there isn't enough time for that but you do have enough time for that if you make it out and I promise it's worth the effort. And honestly by the time that you make pretty notes you've been exposed to this material three times so you should be knowing it you know you should be knowing it as you write it you know and is as if you didn't have already have enough of uh, enough exposure you can always make flashcards i know for drugs i always made flashcards a, a couple of days before the test just to i always made flashcards this is exam two of my last semester and exam three of my last semester if i went out with it as a restaurant you don't want to pull out your textbook i would kind of have my note cards in my purse because sometimes the food would take forever to come out and you got a good what five ten minutes of studying and get it in where you can i would highly encourage you to make acronyms and mnemonics um the sillier the better the dirtier the better the more you'll be able to recall them on spot sometimes i would go into the test and write our mnemonics down on the test just so i would always have just in case i like blinked out i would just have it written down 
when I got my test, the first, we still do handwritten tests for pharmacology. Our teacher fought really hard for that. So when, as soon as I got my test, I would write down everything that I remembered. I'd spend a good five to ten minutes just doing that. My friends would be like, you give me anxiety because I look over and I see you writing down everything that you recall, but I can't think of anything better than that. I would always know the worst side effects of each drug um, in pharmacology. When you're looking at the pharmacology side of everything, I would look at the worst side effects. Um, and remember that every drug that's meant to do something, a lot of their side effects will have something that will involve the intensified effects of whatever it's supposed to do. For example, for anticholinergic drugs, you'll get atropine. Those are drugs that dry you up when you have too much bodily fluids on the inside. Uh, when you're in a cholinergic crisis, it's the drug that they'll give to you. Like cholinergic syndrome. So you'll get hyperthermia, dry mucous membranes, tachycardia, coma, psychosis, stuff like that. All those are intensified effects of what the drug was initially supposed to be. The best way to study for the pathophysiology courses is just listen to your professor. Um, mine personally never tested out of her book. I don't know where she tested out of, but we always knew if we listened to her lecture, we'd probably get most of her um, questions correct. Also study your professor's slides. I know that like first, after the first exam, you'll know exactly what she, what he or she, I had a she, you'll know exactly what he or she tests out of. We personally got tested over the slides and we figured that out after the first. And also for patho, it is extremely helpful to watch registered nurse RN on YouTube, Nurse Sarah. I am telling you, it, when, it, when she was teaching, it was almost exactly like what my professor was teaching me, but I think it's something about her accent that makes me want to listen to her even more. I don't know. And also she has interactive quizzes at the end of her lectures. You click on the link, it takes you to your website, to her website. You take the quiz and you exactly what you learn, what you still need to touch up on and stuff like that. And they're actually good questions. She is a registered how the test question should look like. Always read the end of the chapter. I cannot stress that enough. Um, they look a little like this, key points, and then the side is really important too. It's kind of all the drugs condensed. Um, these are called nursing implications and they'll have things for you to look at as a nurse or so what things you should be uh, thinking about. And I know my professor always tested some things out of the nursing implications. Come up with a routine. Establish a routine of one to study in the week. Um, finish reviewing the lectures and making your notes in the same week. So if you have two lectures a week, make sure you have those two lectures um, learned and written down by the Sunday after your week has ended so that you don't get behind by the time the next um, two lectures come around because I know personally we had exams every three to four weeks closer to three weeks um, and we didn't like getting behind um, by we I mean my friends my friend my study group and I uh, have an awesome study group which is something everyone should consider looking at I know my school really stressed having a study group at the beginning of our uh, nursing boot camp they were like find a study group do you have a study group great good and a lot of us all became uh, friends my study group is super close-knit we study together we go out together we eat together everything we do together so start studying your material minimum a week in advance um, i know sometimes it's hard a couple of days in advance do not leave the day of reviewing to the day before the test have your stuff learned by the end of the week on the weeks you've learned it so that time so by the time test week comes you're not um, in a flurry practice questions you can literally go on quizlet type in chapter whatever pharmacology practice questions hesi questions and you will get a pretty good um idea of how you will be tested. Also the practice questions help you understand the critical um, effects of each drug, the adverse reactions. There are so many adverse reactions for each drug. Personally we had to know the life-threatening ones because it's impossible to know every single ADR. Also the answer will never be nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Never. GI effects are always the most common complications for um, any drug. So our professor always told us that like while it's correct, it's never the answer. But don't quote me on the case it is. Uh, personally, it was never the answer for us. Get yourself pretty note-taking supplies. The more, the prettier the note-taking supplies, um, the more you'll want to use them. I will link some down below from Amazon on what my favorite were. And I know a lot of my friends ended up buying the same midliners that I ended up getting, so it was kind of fun that way to see everybody um, use the same stuff. 
um get yourself a whiteboard i will insert clips on whenever we were still in school because you know we're still in quarantine when we were still in school i like to record bits of um us studying and i have quite a couple of bits of us actually using the whiteboard teaching each other material and uh, so i'll insert them here but it is really important to um try it out uh use your whiteboard when we got uh sent home and online i personally bought myself a whiteboard and i use that all the time it's white now because i just had a test but all the time i love I, i'll link it on amazon it was amazing um i think it's the best purchase i've made throughout nursing school time management upperclassmen always told us like never pull an all-nighter like don't do it for the test like before the test just put your stuff away um i don't know about you guys but that would cause me so much anxiety and uh some people even told us like oh if you have to study the if you have to study the day before an exam like you have failed that time management and i think that's false because for me if i don't study the night before the test or the day before the test like I have mad anxiety so I can't do it um, we would even pull all-nighters like everybody I know studies the night before the test don't worry about it don't let anybody shame you for that and lastly something called the dosage calculation exam is probably the one of the most nerve-wracking things that I ever had to endure in nursing school because I'm bad at math I always joke that if I had had to take another chemistry or math course um, that I wouldn't have done nursing but that's a lie because that is a lie because now I have to take organic chemistry next summer for personal reasons but now I have to get good at it um, I've always been really bad at math but the fact that you have to make a 90 to 100 our program is a 90 plus I know um, some of the programs in my city require 100 others require like a 95 up I made a 95 on mine it was 20 questions uh, ranging from questions from IV drip factor to weight dose weight based calculations and just simple tablet cal you do get either two to three times depending on your program to take the test the best advice I could give to you is watch registered nurse RN she does have a dosage calculation video I will link it down below as well watch the video do her quiz her quiz is very I think it mimicked ours very well um, the only way you will get better is with practice. Memorize the conversions. Do the practice. Um, it will really help. I practiced for I think five, six days. So by the time the test came, I was like, this is easy. And I was done in like maybe 30 minutes. So I hope these tips helped you out. Really, um, if you have any other suggestions for videos, leave them down below. I just finished, I'm, I'm about to finish a fundamentals and nursing course. So I could make a video on how I studied for that. And without further ado, like, subscribe, follow my nursing Instagram. Uh, I do post my notes on there, which a lot of people tell me are very helpful. So with that, I will see you guys next time.